Hi, I'm James from Sonic Couture and I'm going to be taking a look at our new Sundrums product. It's a follow-up to our really popular Mooncats product, but where Mooncats focused on brushes and rods and other tools and had a kind of jazzy vibe, um, Sundrums is just sticks because Mooncats sounded so great in that studio in Conk in North London um, with that vintage desk and that mic collection and those drummers everything just came together and made it a really special sounding product so of course we wanted to just hear more of that and hear more um, drum sounds if they were recorded with sticks and more conventional means so the focus for sun drums is really kind of um, i would describe it as a modern vintage sound which i guess sounds contradictory but i think we all um, get what I mean. It's um, for all those genres like uh, hip hop, um, trap, uh, even pop, rock, where you want that kind of fat, dusty, warm, modern sound um, that just slots right into a production. You want that acoustic drum sound, but it, that it sounds uh, upfront in your face and tight. So that's what we focused on. Um, we found that uh, tuning the drums a little bit higher than you often hear in many drum libraries was kind of key to that. That's key to getting sounds that um, that cut through the mix that, that sit into those beats well. So that's what we did. Um, we worked with an incredible drum tech called Martin Oldham, who has worked with just about everybody in the industry. Uh, for example, he's Niall Rogers' drum tech, so I think that says all you need to know about a tight sound. Um, he brought along an incredible collection of um, vintage kits and you know, the, the, the most amazing snare collection you've ever seen in your life. We'll get to that later. Um, and now I'll give you a quick overview of the um, of the GUI. Okay, just very quickly, um, you have the main picture of the kit. Here you can select pieces by clicking here. Um, below that is the mixer panel. Now you, you can't, uh, you don't hide or um, open that. We like to have it just there all the time because we think it's really key to a drum instrument. And again, you can select the pieces you need on the mixer channels. Uh, on the right hand side, um, that's the drum select area. Uh, here you can select the different drums we recorded and you can mix the various mics for that. And then you have controls over the envelopes, etc. Um, that's the front panel. We also have this separate tab which contains our three beat tools. Now, I'll be coming to them later, but uh, the beat tools are three different types of drum sequences that will give you uh, very different um, but all fun results. Okay, let's look at the uh, drum select panel here in Sun Drums. Um, the first one is the kick drum. Let's look at that. Um, what's really useful about Sun Drums is that you can play a pattern from the beat tools just by clicking this play. So I'm going to uh, solo the kick channel there. Okay, if we look over to the right, you can um, you can pick here from the different kicks we recorded. Five different kicks in various different stages of damping. Uh, this is the 24 inch damp, you could have it open. There's a 20, 26. So let's look at the mics. Um, what you're hearing at the, at the moment are just these two uh, close mics here. Um, on the kick we have the, a mic pointing at the beater by the drummer's foot to give you a real click. And then we have a mic around the other side, uh, FET 47, which captures the, uh, the front head. So. All, all our drums were all our kick drums were recorded with two heads so um, if you blend those two mics you get you get the nicest blend of those now we also have a bleed channel um, this is the snare drum wire mic but it's also combined with um, a crotch mic that we had on sun drums which was um, just kind of pointing down over the uh, over the kick drum it's kind of at the drummer's crotch hence the name. So we've blended that on this drum. As you can see, that brings in the wires and gives it that kind of um, that realism and definition you might want. You find as you take it away, you really kind of miss that. Um, and now the bottom row, 
are our stereo mics. Uh, we have an overhead, uh, which were the Coles ribbon mics, pointing down in the conventional way. We have a rear um, stereo mic, which was the um, Neumann KM86s, uh, set up behind the drummer's shoulders, um, facing kind of down the room with the, with the kit, obviously, in the foreground. Um, again, something we did on moon kits and worked so well that, that we just wanted the same setup. Works particularly well on kick, these mics, I think. Um, really gives it kind of, uh, really solidifies the sound without being overly roomy. And then we have our room mics. Um, actually, I think I'm going to change this back to the... I think maybe that fluffy uh, 26 wasn't exactly the right sound. You can hear the, the rear mic there really, really fills out that kick drum sound. Uh, and our room mics were a pair of 67s right back, right at the back corners of the room in conk, um, further back and bigger than, than we did for moon kits. Um, as you can hear, that's that's what you, you want to hear from a room sound. Um, now, as with moon kits, um, you have the option, which I think is a really nice feature, to route these um, stereo mics either to separate buses in the conventional way where you might have a um, an overhead bus and a room bus separate to your close mics, or which is slightly different, um, but I think it's really often really useful for um, more modern productions or um, dance music or hip hop, is to keep these mics um, in the main channel. But let me just explain what I mean in a bit more detail. Um, here are our close mics just on the kick channel, um, as you'd expect. Now, in the in the traditional uh, sense, you would have the overhead routed to a different bus. Uh, and then you might you would do that with your entire kit. So all your um, overheads would be uh, routed to that bus, and you could process compress that separately, bring it up and down. That's a really useful way of working, um, of course. But also sometimes maybe you just want that to be on one fader, so that if you then come to process that, compress it, EQ it. Uh, then all of that will happen there. Also, of course, in the modern DAW way of working, maybe you just want to put all that out to one DAW channel, collect it together, um, in which case you can. This is where you do that. We get asked about this a lot. Um, this is where you can route out to your separate contact outputs if you've set them up. I've only got two set up, but here you go. You'd select that or or that. So it's a really handy way of just organizing stuff out to the DAW if you want to do that. Um, so I, I like that feature. Okay, um, moving on. That's uh, all our set of mics. So as I say, they are uh, replicated. So for the snare, you've also got six mics. Um, and you, you have top, bottom, and here we have the crotch mic. Um, let's just play uh, snare pattern. Now we've got snare spread across two different uh, sequences of channels here. I've got to say something about this snare. This is the Cannabis Zelkova, which is a, a modern snare drum um, Martin brought along, but it's uh, I think it's probably my favourite in the collection. It really is the kind of driest, woodiest snare I've ever heard. It's, um, I believe it's a Japanese brand and the snare drum is made of a single piece of oak hollowed out. Um, well, there's pictures on our websites, do check it out, but it's, it's really tight sounding. Okay, here we are. Let's just take a look at these mics, shall we? Um, top mic pointing at the skin, bottom mic pointing at the wires, Uh, crotch mic. Uh, let me play that on its own because it's really cool. This is sort of somewhere down near the kick drum, kind of below the snare. Um, we actually overdrove um, on the Neve desk channel. We really cranked the preamp, preamp on this, so you've got a, a kind of grungy um, 
distorted sound. Often, often it's all you need is the crotch mic um, for that the right sound to sit in a mix. I've been finding. Anyway, let's go back to the. And then again, overheads, rear room. Now I just want to say something here, um, something we added in, a, in an update to Mooncits that um, I'm guessing some people aren't aware of, and I'd like to mention, we have the, we've added the facility to align the room mics or not. So if you want a natural room sound, it's going to be slightly delayed. Um, and you start to hear a, a double transient. Now that, of course, is the natural way that it's recorded. Um, but in these modern digital times, if you just want to, if you want to line them up so you don't get the double transient and you get more of a kind of ambience effect than a room sound, we have the option just to align room mics, and that's per drum. So if I do it for the snare drum, uh, it, it won't have affected the kick and so on. So I hope, hopefully, you can hear. You've got a cleaner kind of attack to. And that will affect both these channels. Let's switch it off again. It's just a bit messier. Okay, moving down. Um, I'd better say something about the um, the envelope controls and dynamics control again, which are, are here for every drum. Now these are really powerful. Um, and straightforward, so so please don't ignore them. Um, you can really get a lot out of your drums by using these. Um, of course, we have pitch, straightforward, attack. Often nice if you just want um, just to roll off the front of it. And you can vary the shape of that curve um, to the left is, uh, concave to the right is convex. Just shape the attack if you don't want such a sharp transient. It's still pretty useful even up at 24 milliseconds. Okay, um, hold the amount of time the envelope will hold itself. So if I bring back the decay, you'll hear that kind of held section. If you wind this knob all the way out, you get the full decay, of course. Okay, and the second page, we've got high pass filter. Now this is a, a different filter to the one you, you, get, on, you get on the channel. Uh, this is working on the mics pre-channel. It's just another option. And again, low pass filter. Okay. To complete the set, we've got our velocity curve. So, um, Add a few more little low hits here. Just to show this off a bit better. So if I reduce this, you'll start to hear the dynamic range reduce um, to the point where the quiet hits will be um, more or less the same level as the loud hits. With a snare, I mean, the natural point is kind of way above 90%, I find, so that the um, soft hits are, are really just touches. But this is a really handy way of um, compressing your groove and just tweaking the feel um, of your groove without reaching for a conventional compressor. Or, you know, if you're just finding the ghost notes aren't cutting through, it's the, the easiest thing is to really just tweak this a bit. And further to that, you can tweak the curve, um, the velocity curve of where each incoming note will pick the sample from on your velocity stack. So if I move it, if I move it all the way over to the right here, you'll see you get a big convex curve, um, which means across the range, it's always picking much higher, harder samples. And you can clearly hear that in the example. If I bring it back the other way, 
it softens it. It's, it's self-explanatory. We also have a randomized control here. If you set that to, now you've got you've got two factors here at play, which I'd like to mention, um, just because it can be confusing. You've got a randomized control, which will randomize the velocity and therefore the sample that is chosen to play. If I put that to an extreme setting. You'll hear it's, it's kind of varying quite a lot there. Um, but what you've also got um, is a round robin control. Uh, I think most people are familiar with round robin. This is the you know the setting that means that if you've got some hits in quick succession at the same velocity, then it won't play the same sample twice and, and then give you um, a kind of machine gunning effect, which is undesirable. If you do want a consistent hard sound, like if you are um, making a dance beat or whatever, um, you may well want to turn that off. I often do. So with both of those off, with the randomizer off and round robin off, you're going to be hearing the same set of hits on this groove as we play along each time around. Obviously, best at, at low values for a natural field. Okay, I think that covers um, these controls. Apart from, I, as I always need to mention, the secret pro user facility, um, which are these little numbers here. Now, you don't need to get involved with this, but they are a kind of power user tip. Um, let's, for this, I think it's always nice to go back to the kick to illustrate. because I know a good way of uh, illustrating what's happening here. So uh, each of these little numbers refers to the mic. So one refers to beta, two refers to front, etc., etc. So we've got two mics up at the moment. If I select one, now this means that all these knobs, all the editing below here will only apply to that knob. So the obvious way to illustrate that is to bring the pitch down. But I've only brought the pitch down on this one. So if I go to number two, I can take the pitch up. So now I've got a kind of unnatural combination of a high pitched kick drum and a low pitch one. And I can blend them. So this is the kind of sound design um, creative end. You can go further. Uh, you can decide that you want your high pitched kick drum to be high passed. Just so you get a click. And you can decide, naturally enough, that you want your low pitch to be low passed. And you can blend the two. There we are, that's not a bad result. Uh, and it, equally, it applies with the um, envelopes. Um, so, a good example of that would be with the snare. Just going to put this, keep this on the center, I think. Let's do a similar thing. Um, something I do quite a lot is to kind of um, working with this is to kind of emulate a drum machine um, type sound design, like an 808, where you have two elements, where the um, one element is the kind of body sound, and then you have the kind of the crack snap wire element. Um, so it's kind of making a synthetic sound out of um, natural drums. So we start with our top, and we select number one to make sure that is selected and we'll just filter that. So immediately that maybe puts you in mind of a 808 or 909 snare uh, with the with the um, snap control turned down. Okay, let's go to here and we'd high pass this. And maybe we'd also rein in the decay. Again, quite an unnatural result. So if we blend the two together, then you 
you've got a kind of instant actually I'm going to adjust the you've got a kind of instant 808 okay um, lots to experiment with there you can just vary the pitch of the body You could do something with the room as well. So there's our traditional room sample. Let's select that. You can kind of gate it. Filter it again. We've aligned that already, so that's good. Okay. Okay, I'll I'll leave that. Hopefully that gives you some ideas for um for getting creative with your own drums. Okay, um the mixer and the mixer channels. Um as I say, with each channel you can select it here, uh, or the kit piece will clicking the kit piece will also select the channel. Now if you click the two dials at the bottom, it brings up your channel strip. You get the same channel strip for each drum uh, and for the buses, the two buses, bus one and two. The master has a different set which I'll look at in a moment. Um, but onto our channel, let's play some drums. Um, so on our kick channel, Going to need to solo the kick here because on this example um, as I mentioned earlier uh, we've got the kick routed out to an overhead channel bus one uh, we can see this here if you look at the kick uh, it's routed to bus one and um, the room mics are routed to bus two so as I mentioned if you're playing the whole kit you can hear all the overhead mics at once here, or all the room mics here. Let's focus on the kick. The reason I need to solo it on the beat tool uh, rather than here is because if I want to hear all the kick mics which are routed to different channels, I need to do that. If they were all routed to the main channel, I could just solo the channel. Okay, here's our dry mics. Um, filters here, um, a very nice sensitive high pass filter uh, here in contact. One of the many filters they have which goes down to 8 hertz, which is incredibly useful for fine tuning the low end response of a kick drum. Just cutting out the really low stuff. You've got a low pass filter. And you can select various types here and band passes as well. Um, actually, what's very useful is the low pass one, which gives you a really gentle um, roll off on the high end. Um, if you wanted a resonant filter, you might select the Moog ladder type filters, and then you've got resonance. But we'll leave that for now. You've got a compressor. Uh, again, as I've said many times in these videos, I think the Contact Pro compressor is excellent for drums. Um, it enables you to really focus uh, the sound and, and um, dial in what you want really easily. Um, it's often useful to start with the ratio, I find the ratio down at um, zero. Switch it in and then move the ratio up uh, until you uh, get the effect you want. I often find very little is required just to give a natural focus. Of course, if you want to go crazy, you can. Okay. Transient control, really useful, um, particularly with these kind of grooves, um, with tighter grooves, I'm finding myself always wanting to bring back down the sustain but, uh, on kicks and snares. 
just makes things sound tighter without kind of unnaturally um, shortening the envelope. EQ, I guess we all know what they do. You can kick out some, cut out some boom there. Bring up some click, if that's what you wanted to do. And saturation, you can drive your sound a bit harder. And the width control. Um, we've only got mono mics routed into the channel at the moment, so you won't hear a difference. Um, I could just bring back the overhead mic now and the room mic. They're all on this channel. And I could increase the width of those or mono them. I'll put these back where they were. Okay, that's um, quite simply uh, the channel. It's the same for each one. It's a really useful set of tools. Um, it's perhaps a little bit different if you're dealing with the, with the bus channels. Um, as you can see, I've got the compressor switched in here on the overhead, something that's quite common to do in drum mixing. Just, you can just bring out some detail with that. Um, bring out the width. You can increase the width of the overhead channel for the whole kit. Um, quite important with these kind of channels to, to suck out um, nasty frequencies like a boxy, boxy 500 hertz. Maybe brighten them up. There's the room. Compression always quite important on a room channel. Okay, I'll leave that there. Okay, the master channel. Um, select it here. And again, click the dials and we get four processors here. Um, the compressor we've added um, to this product since Mooncakes, we've added the Supercharger GT, which is really just fantastic. It's it's just such a great um, bus processor. Um, let's engage it here. You can see it's just tickling the meters here. Bring the output down a little bit. Um, you've got a high pass to change how the compressor responds to the low end. Um, saturation control you can set to medium or hot. Best used, uh, um, best used sparingly, but it does sound really good. Uh, compression control. So you can immediately hear those room channels uh, um, coming up in, um, the, in the mix there. Attack, release, um, the usual things you'd expect to see. Uh, character, this is quite interesting. It, it kind of puts an EQ, a different uh, frequency characteristic across it. Warm, you'll hear uh, rolls off some high end. Um, fat kind of carves out the middle. Bright, boosts the upper mids. Me, I'm a kind of a warm guy. Um, I find, uh, yeah, setting it about here is nearly always desirable. If I just turn that off now, um, you'll really hear what it's getting up to. Equalizer, it's the same as the channel EQ. I won't go into any detail there with that. Um, the tape processor kind of doubles up on the saturation that you get in the supercharger, but it, um, it's a different kind of flavor, so it can, it's quite nice. Quite handy, this high frequency roll off. Uh, 
and a simple limiter um, just if you want to stop things clipping really it's not really the sort of limiter you would use for any kind of effect but you can increase you can use it to increase the gain um, which is good okay that's the master channel okay on to the beat tools which live in the second tab here in sun drums there's three of these drum sequencers as the beat shifter euclidean beats and poly beats we're going to start with beat shifter this looks like quite a, um, a conventional drum sequencer as you see we've got eight lanes and there's 16 steps in each you can vary the number of steps in fact here but uh, generally you'll I expect you'll keep it to 16. Let's play what we've got. Okay. Should be straightforward. Let's just... So here's our, here's our kick pattern. And we've got a snare on the center articulation here. And a snare on the edge for variation. So you will need two lanes um, if you want to use two articulations from a snare or, or three if you want to use three. Um, we haven't found a way around that yet. This is our hi-hat. Uh, and the same with hi-hats, I'm afraid you'll need the open and pedal lanes to build a groove. So what makes um, Beat Shifter unique is that you can set up simple um, step grooves as we've done, but you can set each of these lanes to shift and evolve and jump around. So um, one way to show that off might be with the snare drum. What I'm going to do is move our main uh, hit on the two and the four to the center. And then I'm going to use our edge lane um, to put in ghost notes, which is the kind of thing you might want to do in a groove like this. So I'm just going to put in some very low little, little hits in between things. Um, now you can vary the velocity of the lane. Quite useful to fine tune. So we've set up our ghost note lane. Now, as I mentioned, we can get that to evolve and jump around uh, using the shift parameter. We can also vary uh, the chance of one of these hits happening with our chance uh, slider. So I'm going to reduce that to sort of 70%. So as you can hear, it's um, it's choosing, uh, it's randomly choosing different hits to play each time. So you're getting a more natural, varied result. If I set the shift control, then uh, as each bar goes by, the uh, you increase the likelihood of these changing places. So you can hear, you can see, and hear um, these jumping around, giving a kind of natural uh, emulation of a, of a drummer playing this kind of groove. Um, again, with the hats, the, I shall say about the other faders, you can these will this will vary the velocity um, in the same way that your randomized control in the drums will do that. Um, and you can control which way they will jump and how many steps. So if you put this to four, they will jump in, um, in, in sets of four. The 
direction will set the direction that they move um, across the lane. Okay, I hope that explains um, the lane a little bit. Now, you're probably thinking, well, that's all well and good. I've made this groove and it's jumping around nicely. It sounds good, but what use is that to me if I can't get that into my track? Well, luckily you can. If you go to the export bars window here and pick, uh, you can select the number of bars you want to export, let's say eight bars. And then you go to this icon here and you click on it and you can drag a MIDI file. Now you can drop that MIDI file in your DAW and you'll have the MIDI there with the hits uh, to edit as freely as you want. But crucially, all the evolutions, all the jumps and shifts that would have happened over those eight bars if you'd been playing it will be included in that MIDI file. So, um, you know, you can set it to export eight or, or 16 or, or whatever bars. Um, you can drag it out. Then you've got that in the DAW and you can go through and just kind of edit out the one, the shifts that you like and, uh, you know, edit it and keep the stuff you like. Um, I'm going to keep it brief on the beat shifter. As I say, there's um, many other videos that we've made about this uh, with moon kits, uh, electroacoustic, etc. our drum products. Let's have a look at Euclid. Here's a Euclid groove. Now, people find this really intimidating, but it needn't be. It's, uh, it's simple, it's straightforward. Let's play what we've got here. Another nice funky thing. Now, if uh, a little tip here, if you um, alt click on one of the channel dots, it'll solo the channel. So that's a handy place to start with our kick channel. Now you can hear that there's just one hit. The thing about Euclid is, however many hits we put in our lane, there's another one. So one and two. One is an accent, one isn't. If I make it an accent, the dot gets bigger. If I make both an accent, they both get bigger. The big thing to remember about Euclid is however many hits you put in your channel, on the ring, it will space them evenly and rhythmically. So here we are. So we've got nine hits, which is an odd number. So you hear that extra odd one there. Okay, it doesn't make much sense perhaps without some other sounds. Let's put our snare in. Here we go. This is a different lane. We click it, you can see it's a white dot and the white dots are on this lane. So that we know that's the snare. So that's just two snare hits on, on the two and the four. So that's pretty conventional. But we could reduce the number of steps on the snare lane. It's still in time. Seven hits. You can use the shift knob to rotate the pattern on the ring. So um, that's at zero, as you see with the white knobs. If I move it one, you see it moves one step, two steps, and so on. Straightforward. So, I mean, that's a pretty, um, a pretty lively little groove we've come up with without actually even trying. Let's bring in the hat. It's pink. It's on the pink one. Again, 16 and 8, so we've got a nice regular hat pattern happening. However, an odd number, but it works. Okay, let's uh, complement that with a, a half hat as well here. Uh, this is on the kind of lilac ring, the next one in. Bring the kicks back down to fewer. 
thumbs. So as with the um, beat shifter, we could introduce a second track for the snare to do a kind of ghost note thing. So um, let's maybe put our, put our snare back on the two and the four. Two, two, four. Take out the hat so it's a bit easier to hear what's happening. Okay, let's do the ghost note with the snare. So this velocity fader can make that really soft or, or harder. So wherever you put them, wherever you put these knobs, it works. Okay, I think you get the idea. Um, there's really not so much to it. Um, you've got some global controls here, which will control your swing. And you can set the length of the pattern in steps. So if you just wanted a really, you know, simple, short 16 note pattern, um, you can set that. And the rate, so. So. And as before, crucially, you can export this. Um, Double click there and drag it out. You're ready to go. You can assign any of these lanes to what you want. So if you want an extra kick, as I've got here, you can do that or it can be whatever, it can be a ride. So lots of possibilities there. And finally, uh, to polybeats. Now, again, some people can find this a bit daunting because it deals with um, different step lengths within the same beat. You, this is, uh, you can make what's called polyrhythms this way, but actually it's, um, it's just a lot of fun and, and really flexible. So here's the interface, looks a bit like Beat Shifter, but the difference is you've got this knob at the end here, which changes the number of steps. You can see as I move it, uh, you can see the steps changing. Now set the first um, the first four lanes to fours and eights. So that's going to make it really simple to make a kind of nice, easy four four beat. So there's just four steps here. So I'm going to put four blocks in. There we are. And with the snare. So far, so boring. But um, on the next lane, we've got eight, and I'm going to put in a hi hat. And maybe an open hi hat on the next one. So you get the idea. That's our basic black beat. It's, um, it's very straightforward. So what we could now do as an experiment is to, to look at this padlock here. This will lock um, any lanes we don't want to change. So I'm going to lock those two. And now this is where our randomized section comes into play. If we look at that, this button here, this big button says randomize. And below it, we've got a men menu, all. You can randomize even numbers only, odd numbers. Um, powers of two, powers of three, and you set the number of, the maximum number of steps that it will randomize to. So if it's just four, it's just gonna randomize in four. So it's not gonna be a lot of variation. So we'll put it to um, 16 steps. Okay, and then we've locked the first two. So if I hit randomize, all of these other lanes have now randomly populated themselves. Um, we've got Tom and I'm gonna, Take those out to start with. Let's hear the result. So our kick and our snare are still playing the fours. 
but we've got some weird stuff going on with the hats. I can hit randomise again, I don't like it. Okay, I quite like that closed hat on 11s, so I'm going to save that by locking it. So maybe now I increase this, maybe I'll do that. Quite like this knocking groove on the, the floor tom. Maybe I'll just edit. Lock it. Randomize again. She's a pedal sound. If we look at the um, uh, the central menu, it contains all sorts of options for uh, quick and interesting ways to populate the lanes. So uh, if we set that to 32 to the maximum, you could alternate it. You could shift. Now you could then shift them to the left. And change the velocity. Draw a wave. You can invert the velocity of the lane and just randomize each. You can randomize uh, a single lane this way. So you can create these really kind of off rhythms that, that shouldn't work, but um, kind of do. Okay, um, I hope that gives you some insight into just how you could play with poly beats and create the sort of beats that you like um, and just build interesting variations. Um, it's, it's quite a useful tool uh, supporting the other two. So if you're working on a track and, and you just want maybe, maybe you want some kind of middle eight or you want to build some little fills or um, percussive effects at the end of the bar, it's quite good to reach for poly beats and just come up with something strange that you can then drop in by by dragging it in the normal way, dragging it to here, um, before your track reverts back to um, your normal beat. Anyway, I hope you have fun.